name is Father John Hughes, and I want to welcome you back to our fifth month of our 12-part summary of our spirituality formation book, what's called Guided by the Holy Angels. And this month, we want to talk about the sacraments, the importance of the sacraments for our spiritual lives, the importance of, our, of the sacraments for our intimate union with Christ. Um, I'd like to start out with the sacrament of baptism, of course. And the sacrament of baptism is the foundation of the whole of the Christian life. It is the doorway to receiving the rest of the sacraments. It is also the gateway to life in the Spirit, of being able to be led by the Holy Spirit by means of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. Also, through baptism, we are cleansed of all our sins and all punishment due to sin. And therefore, if someone else was to die right after receiving baptism, they would go straight to heaven. So we are cleansed of all our sins and all of the punishment due to sin. We become children of God. We become members of Christ. We become members of the church. And we partake in the mission of the church. This is all bestowed upon us through the grace of baptism. As the baptismal grace takes root in us, we find ourselves growing in our communion with God and man. We find that we see ourselves as a part of God and we see, grow to see our brothers and sisters as a part of ourselves. Next, we want to talk about the sacrament of confirmation. Confirmation deepens our bond with Christ and the Church. The bond that we received at baptism is strengthened and deepened through the sacrament of confirmation. Also, the sacrament of confirmation increases the gifts of the Holy Spirit and strengthens us in the Holy Spirit. And lastly, we'd like to just talk about how the sacrament of confirmation strengthens us for our spiritual battle. St. Paul reminds us that our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against the spiritual order, against the fallen spirits. And our guardian angel can help us to be courageous, can help us to a greater fortitude, encourage us to a greater fortitude in taking up the sword of Christ and doing battle against the fallen spirits. Next, we want to talk about the Holy Eucharist. Holy Eucharist, of course, is the source and summit of all that the Church is and does. Of course, it nourishes us, the Holy Eucharist. It enables us to establish a more intimate communion with Christ and with each other. And through Him, with the Father and the Holy Spirit, the Eucharist, it strengthens us and it purifies us. Of course, we know that the Eucharist can cleanse us from venial sins. And so it's a very powerful means of grace for our spiritual growth. Especially if we've had the opportunity of going mass, to Mass every day, we should take advantage of it precisely because it enables us to be able to grow and love God and our fellow man more fully. And of course, with the help of our guardian angel. And lastly, the Eucharist helps us to make the whole of our life a spiritual sacrifice for God. And the Holy Eucharist. Next, we want to talk about marriage. Of course, marriage is the sacrament which unites man and woman for the sake of uh, the procreation, the raising of children, and also for the good of the spouses, the spiritual and physical well-being of the union and community of the spouses. And the guardian angel plays an important role in marriage because he helps the couples, he helps the man and the woman to purify their intentions, to get rid of bad intentions, and also to get rid of all selfishness, to grow, to be able to give themselves one another more generous love and service of one another. The guardian angel also helps the parents in their missions to build up a domestic church. And that is, of course, 
their family. You can help to encourage them, to teach the faith, to pass on the faith in all this beauty and splendor to their children. Next we have the sacrament of holy orders. And of course the holy, through holy orders, the deacon and priest and bishop receive sacramental grace to carry out their mission of building up the body of Christ. And in particular, we can think of how a guardian angel can help deacons, priests, and bishops with their task of spreading the gospel, the gospel message to others. The guardian angel can do a great deal of good in helping uh, priests and bishops spread the gospel message. In other words, it's good for a priest or bishop to ask the guardian angel of a parish that he's visiting, or of his own parish, or of a diocese where he's going, and ask the guardian angel of the, of the diocese, of the parish, to open up the people, the parishioners, the, uh, open up the hearts of the people to hear the message of God. And next we have the sacrament of confession. The sacrament of confession is a beautiful sacrament, and it is a uh, miraculous confession, a uh, miraculous sacrament also. When we think of how confession enables a priest or a bishop to raise someone from the dead. Uh, obviously, I'm talking about spiritual death. If someone is in a state of mortal sin, they go to confession, they are given spiritual life again. They are given sanctifying grace, and all of their lost merits are returned to them. It's a beautiful, powerful gift that the Church bestows on priests, and it really is a more powerful sacrament, it's a more powerful gift to bring back, to raise people to spiritual life again, than it is to be able to raise people from the dead, the physical realm. So confession is a sacrament of miracles. And the guardian angel can help us to, the guardian angel helps us to, uh, he leads us to contrition. He can lead us, if we are perhaps farther away from the church, he can lead us to an imperfect contrition, which is a contrition that's based on fear of punishment. It's not a perfect love, of course, but with the sacrament of confession, it, it, the sacrament of confession bestows on the penitent the graces needed for it to have a perfect love in order to truly receive the forgiveness of God through the sacrament of confession. But the guardian angel also wants to lead us to perfect contrition, and that is the loving contrition. Being sorry because we hurt our friendship with God. Being sorry because we offended God. The sacrament of confession. And lastly, we have the anointing of the sick. The anointing of the sick is for those who are in danger of death, either through illness or an accident. Uh, someone can be in a danger of death. Don't necessarily have to be on you know, the, the, the edge of death. They're going to die in the next few minutes, or the next few hours, or the next few days. And just the danger of death is sufficient for them to receive the sacrament of the anointing of the sick. And this sacrament has great powers. One of the greatest is, in particular, for those who are on the edge of death, or are very close to dying, and let's just say they can't confess anymore. Well, the anointing of the sick actually bestows on them the grace of the forgiveness of their sins when they can't confess. And this can happen for various reasons. Maybe they can't speak anymore because of their sickness or whatever the case may be. And so that's a very powerful gift. It also strengthens them for their final death agony. And it can strengthen them against discouragement or attacks from evil spirits. So it's a very powerful sacrament. And of course the guardian angels are there to assist the dying. So this was just a brief summary then of the seven sacraments. And I'd just like to highlight briefly the sacrament of the Eucharist and the Sacrament of Confession as two powerful means that we can use frequently. The Holy Eucharist daily and the Confession monthly for the sake of truly being able to make the whole of our lives a sacrifice to God and also to grow in an intimate communion with God and with our fellow man. 
So thank you for your time and your attention. God bless you.